All right, this is Dean, the lead to Twitter Achilles drill. And in this um, short session, we'll be completing what we started in the physical tutorial on um, some common upper limb and torus questions that you have to me 211. Okay, so in today's physical class, we actually dealt with question 1 to 10 of this collection E. So we're actually going to finish up from question 11 to 30, and that will be all on this session. Okay, so. Um, Good thing is a number of things that are within this question one to thirty. Some of them are actually within question one to ten. So if you if you were not present in the physical class, uh, just do it to still watch the video. You will surely learn something. Okay. So all right, so let's dive straight to um, question eleven and then get starts with this very short session. Okay. All right. Question eleven yes says the aortic opening of the diaphragm transmits which of the following that is we're looking for the right one right here in which the aortic opening the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm is transmitted does it transmit phrenic nerve we don't know gastric vessels the left vagus nerve thoracic dots right vagus nerve you can try and choose your answer right now but then in that physical class i did emphasize on the fact that from the name of the opening for example aortic hiatus okay we can deduce the structures passing to it as well as the um what's the name as well as the level of the thoracic vertebra in which you find this. Iotic hiatus has 12 letters, so we know it's corresponding with T12. And then we know that um, the next one, esophageal opening, esophageal opening is corresponding to 10 letters, so we know it's at the level of T10. And then we even have um, the vena cava, vena cava opening corresponding to T8. And then I give some important additions, apart from the fact that aortic hiatus, everyone knows for a fact, certainly. Is conducting the aorta. Esophageal opening is conducting the esophagus. Vena cava opening is also, con also conducting the vena cava. But what are those additions? Um, starting with the vena cava opening. Apart from the vena cava, one important important thing T passes through with the vena cava through the vena cava opening, and that structure is the um what the terminal branches of the right phrenic nerve. Terminal branches of right phrenic nerve. Okay. Take note of that passing together with the vena cava. Of course, vena cava is the passing through. Well, in addition to that, we have terminal branches of the right phrenic nerve. Now, esophageal opening. What other additional thing does it transmit? I use this to remember it. Esophagus. Esophagus. I always emphasize on that gus. And then it also transmits the vagus, the vagus nerve. Okay? Esophagus and the vagus nerve. They both have gus, gus. And then we can just at the fact that vagus nerve could either be the right or the left vagus it transmits both okay so and sometimes they also are otherwise called the gastric nerve because they are going to inhabit the um the stomach okay so they are sometimes called the gastric nerve or the right and left vagus nerve so that's a, those are structures accompanying um the esophagus when they pass through the esophageal now this is where our question is today aortic hiatus what additional structure does it conduct okay yes it conducts the aorta and in addition to that, it also conducts what? Can you remind me? Well, it conducts the, the zygous vein. And then it also conducts the thoracic duct. Okay? The zygous vein and thoracic duct. So, and then we can answer our question from here. Let's read through that question again. The aortic opening of the diaphragm transmits a phrenic nerve. Now, nah, we only find phrenic nerve somewhere around the vena cava. Gastric vessel, we don't even have that around here. Left vagus nerve, we will likely find it together with the esophageal opening somewhere right here. And then thoracic duct, very, very true. We are linking it up already. We are now linking up together. Thoracic duct. And what's the last option, right? The right vagus nerve will still be a part of esophageal esophage opening. Okay. I already know the fact that vagus, vagus nerve, esophagus, gus, gus. All right. So that's that. Let me clean all this mess. Or let me just delete it from here. Okay, so now let's go to question number 11. I'm trying not to take um, um, excessive time on this, so we can just wrap it up and you can find time to study on your own. So Now listen to this beautiful question. It's saying, it's saying as you go further down the bronchial tree of each one, it's talking about the respiratory system, now specifically the bronchial tree. The following changes occur in the hairway. Okay, or the following changes in the hairway occur. The first one is saying more connective tissues are encountered. Really? The option here is saying about 6,000 terminal bronchioles surround each alveoli. 
really? Diameter of airway changes slowly, does it relatively slowly? And collagen in the alveoli increases, does it? The last option there says most smooth muscles are seen relative to the size of the hairway. Really? Well, let's knock them out one by one. Now, let me erase this for a start. Okay, so now the first option right here, listen to me. Why is this one false? We are expecting the bronchial tree to be reducing in the content of connective tissue and increasing in the content of smooth muscle as well as epithelial lining. Okay, so we're not expected to encounter more connective tissue. Instead, what we encounter will be more smooth muscles um, and then we'll be encountering um, a lot of epithelial tissues more. Epithelial tissues are the ones in which um, it allows for the exchange of gases and all. Let me get a beautiful picture of this. I should have something showing this. Okay, let me come, let me delete this and then come to um, my screen right here. Okay, so um, wait a second. Yeah, I think I got this beautiful picture online. So the thing is, as you're traveling down the bronchi tree, the first thing is the primary bronchi. And then you move to the level of the secondary bronchi, otherwise called the lobar bronchi. And then from the lobar bronchi, you go to the, um, what's the name? You go to the tertiary bronchi. These are the ones going to the um, to the different low, to the different, um, what's the name? Segments, segments of the lungs, okay? You know the lung is such that we have the entire lung, we have lobes, for example, the right lung, we have three lobes, left lung, we have two lobes, and then we have segments, okay? Each lobe we have segments, right? So the same thing is actually kind of happening right here in the bronchi. As you are traveling down, we initially have this very large primary bronchi, which has a lot of cartilage, they are right there. The same cartilage you find in the trachea, you find them right there. But as you are traveling down to the level of the what? To the level of the bronchioles, you will be reducing the content of your cartilage. Instead, what you now be increasing now will be the content of your smooth muscles because we don't want the structures down here to be collapsing. We want them to be able to kind of relax and kind of expand. So we want more of smooth muscles there. Okay? So in recent, the only correct option right here is the fact that, let's erase this first, is the fact that more smooth muscles are seen relatively to the size of the airway. Every other thing is in fact wrong. There are about 6,000 terminal bronchial surrounding each, each alveolar side. Nah, that's wrong. Instead, what you even have is alveolar sacs surrounding bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles and all. Not the whole, the reverse way. And then diameters of the air changes rapidly from something really large to something really small to something really small to something really small. So it is decreasing, okay, in a very um, large ratio, not relatively slow. And then collagen decreases collagen is a very important content is a, is a connective tissue um, fiber so you are finding them releasing down the length of the bronchial tree and smooth muscles are sure increasing content okay in in um, most smooth muscles you are finding them and the same relatively to the size of the hairway are we good guys okay so now let's wrap up things right here um come to what's the name question number 13. okay just stick with me okay it's going to be it's not really going to be a long one um, the the latter part of this past question is more of two of us questions, which are direct. All these ones are MCQ, that's why it's looking a bit, um, looking like a lot. So the question 13 here is talking about the fibroblast. Fibroblast is one of the cells of connective tissues, of course. And it's talking about the fact that, um, now these are options, so we're going to knock off the ones that are correct and the ones that are right. So the first one says, fibroblasts are non fiber secretions. Are they? In fact, they are highly secretive. They secrete the substance called collagen. So that option is certainly out of it. They are large flat cells, right? We're coming back to that. They engulf materials by phagocytosis. What set of connective tissues carry as phagocytosis? Remind me. Macrophages. Macrophages are the ones that eat up foreign materials through the process of phagocytosis. Are they large round cells? It is mast cells that are round cells. Mast cells, the ones that secrete histamine. Okay, the mediate inflammation. But those are the ones that are round. As a matter of fact, fibroblasts are kind of spindle shaped. Spindle shaped, not round. Okay. And then the secret chondroitin sulfate. Nah, it is chondrocytes, cells making up cartilages that secret chondroitin sulfate. The only thing true here is the fact that they are, they are large flat cells. Are we good? 
So everything else is false. All right. So you could see this in a true or false format as well. Just take note of the one that is true and the one that is wrong. And then let's come to this. Musculocutaneous nerve supplies all except except factor. Always check out for that. Right? Always check out for it. Sometimes it's not about knowing this thing in exam. Sometimes you have to read your question multiple times. You could choose the wrong answer. It happens. And funny how it might have been that one that you know the most. But because of your haste or the maybe fear of time, your time will be enough. Don't, don't worry. It's true or false. Maybe MCQ will be enough. But just calm down, read your questions right. So, musculocutaneous nerve, we know it's an important nerve of the upper limb. Okay, and it is supplying the muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. Muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. Anterior arm. Okay, um, something is on my style of spin. Just bear with me. Okay, so and what are those muscles in the anterior arm? We have the likes of um, um, the brachialis muscle, we have the bicep brachii muscle. And then we have the coracobrachialis muscle. Coracobrachialis muscle. So all these muscles are actually innervated by musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous. Now, in addition to motor innervation, we also have sensory innervation. So you talk about the likes of the um, the arm. This is sensory supplied to the anterior part of the arm, and even a part of the forearm as well. Anterior part of the forearm. They are innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. Okay, sensory innervation to the arm and the anterior part of the forearm. Okay, they are innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So, what is false right here now? Can we not take a look at what is false right here? What is wrong? Let's read it again. Musculocutaneous nerve supply, skin in the anterior compartment, anterior aspect of the forearm. Quite true. Brachialis muscle is, in fact, the muscle of the anterior compartment of the arm. Very true. Bicep brachii, also true. Coracle brachialis, also true. Just remember BBC. BBC is the mnemonic for the muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. And they are all innervated by the um, musculocutaneous nerve. So the one we're going to leave out is this brachioradialis. Brachioradialis, despite this is a flexor of the elbow joint, because many of these muscles, they actually, especially bicep brachii and brachialis, they contribute as flexors of the elbow joint. Brachialis muscle is also a flexor of the elbow joint, but it is innervated by radial nerve. Please write that down. Radial nerve, it is a, you knock it out. It doesn't belong to this group, okay? So take good note of that. So everything right here is actually true regarding the musculocutaneous nerve, except the brachialis muscle, which is actually innervated by radial nerve, okay? So let's take good note of that. Can we now go to our next question? Our next question is talking about the aortic opening of the diaphragm. Wow, a lot of opening regarding the diaphragm. This is a question from last year, by the way. So take good note of it. So well, we already know that aortic hiatus it corresponds to the level of what? Level of T12. So everything aside this was wrong. The likes of T10 and the like. And it in recent it's somewhere around the anterior body of T12. Okay? Anterior to the body of T12, rather. It's certainly not around the spinous process of it. It's not around the posterior to the body. It is anterior to the body, right? So take good note of that. It's quite direct here. Yeah? Okay, so now let's come to, what's the name? Let's come to the next question, which is about connective tissue. Connective tissue cannot, cannot be found where? Lining of intestines, blood vessels, cerebral cortex, testes, pancreas of highlights. Which of these rings a bell? Yeah, lining. Lining is something talking about epithelial tissues already. So even if I'm not sure of any of that, as, as I'm seeing lining, like that, the force and direct, like it's not even looking close to it. Blood vessel, someone might be like, ah, uh -uh, blood vessel is a cavity like structure. Now, let me draw your attention to this. I think I got a picture online which is kind of showing the layers of the blood vessels. The layers of the blood vessels are actually such that listen, there is an, a tunica intima, there is a tunica media, and there is a tunica externa. The tunica intima is the one that is purely epithelial. Okay? Tunica media is actually muscular, it's a layer of smooth muscle. Why the outer layer is a layer of connective tissue. This one consists of blood vessels and then some nerves, in fact, that are supplying the blood vessel. It's not making sense, right? Everything is a blood vessel. But in fact, blood vessels still have blood supply and they also have nervous supply. So it is this tunica externa that is actually the connective tissue layer part. Okay? So, 
and then every other thing they are what they are tissues and they are making up the blood vessel so don't think because it's a blood vessel and then you expect it to be they automatically be an epithelial structure okay there is an epithelial layer of it the intima there is a muscle layer of it the uh, media and there's a connective la tissue layer of it called the um, tunica externa are we good so let's take go back to that question and then um, wrap things on it so the question again says connective tissue cannot be found it can be found in blood vessels, you can find it in the subracotate, you can find it in, um, in the testes, you can find it in the pancreatic islet. You cannot find it in, um, in the lining of intestines, okay? So I'm not too satisfied with this question, though, because cerebral cortex is quite vague. If they said the brain, yeah, we can agree with the fact that, okay, yes, um, the dura mater and the likes are typical connective tissues and all. So, but then, this um, best of choice, or what do they call them? best of options so this is one that actually looks best linings what find lining the intestine are epithelial tissues not connective tissues so now let's come back to uh let's go to question 17 rather connective tissues are highly vascularized except where except cartilages okay cartilages are the only a vascular connective tissue every other connective tissue are quite vascularized Okay, so take good notes of all those. All right, and then question 18. Esophagia, hiatus, otherwise called esophagia opening, lies at the level of T10. We're not going to go over this again. Take good note of that. T12, umba, um, so body of T12, all those ones are distractions. T10 is where you find the esophagia opening. And then straight here to what's the name? Question number, um, question number 19. Which of the following statement is incorrect regarding superior mediastinum? I actually said some things about this in the physical class, but I'll mention it again for the last time. So you made use of this very beautiful picture in that class. I sent it to your class group chat. In case you didn't get it, let's go over it again. Um, here is the picture. Everything right here. Um, we have this um, transverse thoracic brain separating superior mediastinum from inferior mediastinum. Now in the superior mediastinum, we have everything right here. We have blood vessels. We have the arc of the aorta. And then the branches arising from it. We even have the pulmonary trunks and many other things. Okay, they are arising from the heart. So they are all contents making up the superior mediastinum. I prefer this more beautiful picture. Take a look at this. Um, this picture right here is, is from Teach Me Anatomy, and I love the fact that they analyze the superior mediastinum quite well. This is still that beautiful transverse thoracic brain separating inferior mediastinum from superior mediastinum. So, and here are different contents of the superior mediastinum. Phrenic nerve is passing through it. Part of it too, we still find their way to the anterior mediastinum. And then we even having vagus nerve is passing through it as well. The trachea is still there. Towards T4, T5, which is the where we find the transfer thoracic plane, it will have bifurcated. So we won't find the trachea beneath T4, T5. So, but trachea is still up there in the superior mediastinum. The sovagus is still up there as well. And many other great vessels, the hack of the aorta together with its different branches, they are all in this superior mediastinum. So you can just try and check your slide for the contents of the superior mediastinum so you can know, because there are different schools of thought, so you can know which is um, which was used in your class. Are we good? So um, let's come back to the question and answer what we have right here. So which of the following is incorrect about superior mediastinum? Here's my pen, okay? Superior mediastinum. The supergirls is posterior to trachea within it. Which is incorrect okay this is quite true okay one of the branches of the aorta one of the branches of the aorta is found there is it one of the branches of the arc of aorta have multiple branches left common carotid artery and then we have left subclavian artery that arising from it even the brachiocephalic artery also arising from the arc of the aorta they are whole content okay they are whole contents of this superior mediastinum and then it contains the thymus it's actually true Thymus tree is true, and then it contains both the left and right brachiocephalic trunk. Yes, thoracic dot two, also very true. So the only thing that is incorrect here is actually the fact that they mentioned that it contains one of the branches of the arc of aorta. It contains more than one branch. It's greater than one branch. Are we good? So that's that about that. So we are left with some very quick and straightforward questions right here. Um, okay, we have this last MCQ question. The synophys. Uh, eosinophils 
They actually have large cytoplasmic granules. They are colorless or kind of blue in shape, not brownish. They are um, the multilobe um, lymph. They, are, they have lysosome filled granules. This is the only true thing about them. They are not multilobed, okay? And then their lifespan is actually about two to five days, okay? Two to five days. So the only thing false here is, um, the only thing true here, rather, is that they have lysosome filled with granules, okay? So take note, I think this is a question from um, blood tissue. Yes, that's the topic, blood tissue. So all those different cells, neutrophils, and many other cells making up the white blood cells, the different types. So you can check them out if you are not too familiar with them, okay? Take note of their lifespan, their color, their shape, and then the, the, the lobes they have. I can't remember some of them at the moment. I will have no information on it. Okay, but I know the fact that you know, this is the only true thing about it. So let's finish up things with the remaining part of this PQ. Um, question 21 say, following fertilization, the resulting zygote contains genetic materials derived from both maternal and paternal nuclei and mitochondrial DNA. It's only the maternal DNA that contributes to this. Is false. Yes, both paternal and maternal nuclear DNA, they contribute. But not both maternal and paternal mitochondrial DNA contribute. So this is false, okay? And then the next thing here, fertilization does not occur in the uterine cavity. Yes, this is actually true. It doesn't occur in the uterine cavity. Fertilization occurs in the um, fallopian tube, otherwise called the uterine tube, otherwise called the ovidot. Fallopian tube, otherwise called ovidot, otherwise called uterine tube. They mean the same thing, okay? So take good note of all those. And then let's come to question number 24. Question number 23, rather. It says the ampulla is the longest and narrowest part of the uterine tube. Is that true? The narrowest here makes it false. It is in fact the why it's one of the widest parts. It is a wide part in the uterine tube, okay? not the narrowest part. Okay. So and then ampulla fertilization takes place here. Ovulation takes place at the proximal most part of the fallopian tube. You know the egg will be released from the surface of the ovary and then the proximal most part is modified with fimbriae and then they will sweep off that ovulated egg and they will bring it into the fallopian tube. Okay, then somewhere within the ampulla, you will have fertilization taking place. Okay, the ichmos is the narrowest part of the tube, not the ampulla. And then right here, passage of sperm to the coronary that is under the influence of iaronidase enzyme from the sperm. Yeah, all these are otherwise all the acrosomal reaction. A lot of things make up the acrosomal reaction, the process in which the Head of the sperm balls into the body of the who's okay into the body of the who okay but this is right here is very true and then the sex of the conceptus the sex of the conceptus is determined at the Moriza stage is it no it is in fact determined from the point of the zygote once you have the paternal cell paternal sperm and then the maternal ovum that DNA will mix together and then we can derive the XY chromosome at the level of the zygote if it is x y or if it's x at the level of the zygote we can know this so um it is not determined a more last it's from the point of fertilization it is determined okay so then fertilization takes place at the ampulla of the uterine tube very very true zona reaction prevents polysperm polysperm is just a condition in which a single ovum can fertilize by two different sperm is a rare condition and not meant to happen but zona reaction will normally prevent it so this is true all right so um the last set of questions right here now let me scroll down during fertilization the sperm and the plasma membrane penetrate the side no it is only the sperm the dna content of the sperm it just kisses it and it opens its dna content into it the plasma membrane cytoplasm of the sperm its sperm cell is that they degenerate they don't really enter directly okay so as a matter of fact the ovulation bulk of the bulk of the action is compared by the ovum. The sperm is just doing a very small thing, very small thing. So give it a, give a thumbs up to our ladies and all. They are very, they're doing a very good job when it comes to the process of reproduction. Okay, so it's just the DNA content that finds its way into the ovum. Every other thing, support the law, they are gone, all right? So that's that about that. And then question number 29, fertilization helps in the completion of the second meiotic division of the oocyte. You know, oocyte has a kind of fanciful way of 
um, uh, of, it, of its um, the, 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 the process of the formation of oocyte is very complex and beautiful in its own way. There are kind of some stops and some continuation, basically to, to stop in the in the process of um, the first. Um, the process of the first division of the first meiotic division, you have a stop called the dichotin period, okay, dichotin period, which is altered till puberty, and then even after puberty, you still have another altering period or a stopping period at the metaphase of the second meiotic division. So we have process of first meiotic division, that's the first stopping, and then metaphase of second meiotic division, that's the second. And that second stopping is not completed until when fertilization has taken place, until the stimuli of sperm has been um, noticed, has been um, has been um, felt. Okay, it's, that's when fertilization is completed. Right. And then lastly, um, zygote is only a pluripotent cell. Zygote is a totipotent cell. What do you mean by totipotent cell? Totipotent cells are cells capable of producing both structures from an embryo. And structure extra embryonic structures as well, placenta and the like. Pluripotent cells are cells that forms only the embryo. Okay, you talk about the likes so of um, the embryoblast of your blastocyst. Okay, the embryoblast of your blastocyst is a typical pluripotent cell. And then if you have multipotent cells, you have unipotent cells. Unipotent cell it gives rise to only one particular type of cell. You talk about the hepatocytes of livers. When they are going to regenerate at any point in time, they will only give rise to liver cells, hepatocytes. And then multipotent cells. Multipotent cells they can give rise to an array of different cells within a particular organ. Talk about something like the, the, um, the blood, uh, blood stem cells. Blood stem cells from bone marrow. They can differentiate into red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and many other things. But they are all still, they are forms of blood cells, okay? So those are typical multipotent cells. Unipotent cells, just one type of cell. Pluripotent cells, embryonic structures. Totipotent cells, both intra-embryonic and um, extra-embryonic structures. Are we good? So that's all on this session, the one we started this morning at the physical class. Um, if you find the video, like, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you. My name is Dean.